How's it going everyone? We are live from Vaughn Sportsplex 2 with another edition of the Soccer Report Podcast. I'm your host Dante DiTomasis alongside my co-host Nico. I'm Nico, I'm back at it. We want to give a big thank you to our sponsors. TFC on the road again, the best trips in town. Get on that bus, it's a party the whole day. I also want to thank Nine Round Kickboxing and of course Popeye Supplements in Woodbridge. All the best supplements, one place, just hit up Popeye Supplements in Woodbridge and they'll take care of you. Tell them the soccer report sent you. Before we start, we gotta give a big shout out to Richie Larea. Richie, congratulations on your first call up in Canadian men's soccer. First of many, and we wish you all the best on September 7th. Get your tickets now at BMO Field for that game. That's yeah, we September called it. 7th. We called it on this podcast. And we we exactly. said Richie's getting called up, and sure enough, here we are. But now today, we got another guest on, oh, don't yeah. we? Oh, yeah, and he's a very good player as well. He's uh, on, on loan from TFC, and he's with York 9. He's Ryan Telfer. Ryan, hey, thank up, you guys? for coming. No problem, man. Thanks for having us. So, to start, we're going to ask you uh, a simple question. Yeah. Uh, we just wanted to know, what are your first impressions of the, the CPL going on? Uh, you know what it is? It's, it's, uh, uh, it took me by surprise, to be honest. Uh, uh, getting to understand the type of players that was coming in, uh, mostly Canadian players, giving them an opportunity and a shot of what uh, being a professional is. And, you know, so far I've been impressed on what it has become. Uh, you know, recently seeing uh, Kaduchi being called up for the men's national team uh, is, a, is a huge thing for the league. And, you know, this is what the league has been trying to, trying to provide uh, to show that, you know, players, our very own homegrown players here in Canada, have the ability to play at the highest level and, you know, shout at them. And, you know, there are many other players who will be selected further on in the future. And, you know, that's what the CPL is all about, and let's get in there. Well, and a, and a big moment, too, for those that don't know, Mr. Ryan Telfer has gone down in history as the first player to ever score a goal in the CPL history. It'll always be there. Yeah. The very first goal <laughs> yeah. in the history of the league. That's Mr. Ryan Telfer of York 9 FC. How awesome was that moment? Uh, you know what? It's, it's a once in a lifetime moment. Uh, you know, on the field at that point in time, it didn't really, I guess, kick in yet that, you know, it was the first goal of, of a new league. Uh, it's only until after seeing all the comments and stuff like that, it really, it really <laughs> sank in. And it's like, you know what, this this could be a once in a lifetime moment. Uh, you know, I was, I was happy, I was happy to have it. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's really cool. You'll always be there in the history books. And like you said, you know, CPL, I think, has taken a lot of people by storm. Yep. I mean, you guys have competed with MLS quality teams. York 9, you guys should have taken Montreal in York. Montreal got lucky. Yep. You guys had that game. I was there. You guys dominated. Cavalry took out Vancouver. You guys have pro proven that you belong in talks with the best teams in Canada. How does that feel when you see that, when you compete against an MLS team, which people will say is a higher-up league, and you show that you guys deserve to be there with that? You know what? It's all about uh, showcasing yourself and showcasing what you're able to bring to the table. You know, everyone, there's a lot of doubters out there seeing that, you know, CPL is a new league. It's the same thing as how other people observe MLS. They see it as a retirement league and whatnot, but in recent years, you have players who have, been make, who have, who have made a leap across, like Alfonso Davies, Almiron, and they're making big waves in Europe. And, you know, it's going to be the same thing in CPL. These first couple games against Montreal and Vancouver, it shocked, it shocked everyone, and people realized, you know, that CPL is a very good league and it's indeed good to stay. And, you know, I'm just happy to be in one of those games to represent the CPL under that, under that logo and be able to, you know, push an MLS team to their limits. So and, I was really happy for that. And, you know, being a TFC player on loan, was it a little extra sweet to score the goal against Montreal <laughs> the time, to, to tie the game 2-2? First of all, it was a beautiful goal. If you haven't seen oh, a yeah. goal, look at the highlights. You just put a rocket into the net. But was it a little bit sweeter scoring against Montreal? Uh, you know what? I, I didn't really consider the rivalry uh, deep down inside. It was all about, you know, we had to score a goal, we had to make something out of it, uh, try to get a result at home, and it just happened in that in that manner. <laughs> okay, so Ryan, basically, we want to get your thoughts as well on the, from you being recalled in June, yeah. uh, you came in, you played a game against Kansas City, you came in around, I believe, the 85th minute, we definitely needed a result there. Down 2-1. Down 2-1. It's a big time. We get that goal at the end there. What is going through your head? Uh, I, it wasn't. It wasn't something that you know. I really, I guess, really looked into myself uh, before going on the field. Uh, Greg was. Greg was like, you know what? 
you know, Ryan, we really need a result here. You know, <laughs> do what you do best. So, so I went on. Uh, knowing guys, I've never played with Pazuelo. Uh, yeah. I've seen him play. I've watched all the teams, games. I've seen him play the entire time. I've seen what he's, what he's capable of. And being able to play with a player of that caliber, it allows me to express myself a little bit more. Uh, being able to make that run and knowing that he was able to pick that pass. Oh yeah, he was uh, one who chipped yeah. it right over, right. put it right in front. You made a beautiful run, yeah. yeah, and then set up Hamilton for the finish. I mean, but that's followed you throughout your whole career. Yeah. You're an impact player. When you get on the pitch, things happen. I mean, you played for less than 10 minutes and you assisted on that goal that tied the yeah. game. Like things happen when you're on the pitch. It's amazing to watch as a fan too. It's yeah. awesome to see. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why. Uh, you know, TFC sent me on loan. Uh, they wanted me to be that, you know, confidence player, a person who's able to change the game at any moment. And, uh, you know, that loan to York 9 is what really needed me to push me over the edge and become that type of player, become, you know, you know, some people regard as a, a, des a designated player in MLS. And that's, that's basically how I look at it for York 9. I'm supposed to be one of those leaders on the team, I'm supposed to be able to make an impact uh, in, in almost every single game. So. Uh, I try to keep high standards for myself and I try to reach that level. That's good. Well, you know, too, um, uh, to keep on the topic of CPL, it, the, it's been one year yeah. right now. It's the, first, it's the second part of the, of the first full season right now in the fall season. Um, it's hard to kind of develop rivalries in one year. Yeah. So when you see a team like Forge FC, who tonight's playing in Honduras in the CONCACAF um, uh, tournament to get into Champions yeah. League, now do you kind of have a mindset of, I kind of hope they don't want they don't go far so that way we can go yeah. far next year's York or do you kind of see them and you know what I, and you go I hope they succeed I hope they go as far as they can no it's just uh, seeing them basically ride the banner for CPL uh, honestly we wish them all the best and we hope they could, they could make it to the end uh, just the same thing as us during the Canadian Champions League you know all the other CPL teams are rooting for us and uh, Calgary to be the MLS Giants um, it's, it's going to be the same thing for them. I honestly hope they go to Honduras, get a result tonight, and make it to the next round. Big shout out to Kwame Awua. I mean, he was previously on our podcast, and we wish him all the best down there and all the success, current success that Forge is going on right now. They're on an absolute tear. They're going to get a result tonight. Yep. All they need is tie, a tie. A That's tie it. puts them through. Zero, they're going to get zero, that tie. Zero, zero. Empty stadium, I heard as well. Yeah, there's a big issue so, that happened so down the, in yeah, Honduras exactly. last, last week during a derby match. Yeah. Six I'm pretty sure six people got stabbed. Yeah, <laughs> during the game. very, uh, it was very a, interesting location. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of scary to be going down there as a Canadian <laughs> to go play in a game like that. But um, ah, with hostile environment, that's a part of the game, exactly, right? Exactly. All right, Ryan. So you said you said you've watched the TFC games this year, right? Yeah. How, how would you describe their season so far? Because, I mean, we are the soccer report, but we are real focused on Toronto FC because that is the team, as well as now CPL is here. What is your opinion on this year's TFC team? Because there's a lot of difference of opinions you can find out there right now. So what do you feel about the team this year? Uh, you know what? It's been a real roller coaster right for them. You know, they started off the season well. Uh, you know, picking up a uh, win over who are the current uh, leaders in the East right now, Philly. Oh, Philly, yeah. Philly, yeah. Game, game one, they took one. Yeah. Yep. You know, a couple a couple bad results coming on after that. Uh, but unfortunately, some, some things didn't go the way. They had the Gold Cup break where they lost a couple of huge players. They had to play games with all those huge players. And they, for a few games, they made some results about that. And coming back for, the, for those guys, it's, it's been uh, up and down sort of uh, sort of type type of game for them you know one game they go up they win in then sometimes it could be a last minute goal or something goes wrong either a referee decision or whatnot i know it's the tidy game or losing game for them but honestly seeing what they are right now and their, their previous game against uh, montreal um, they really start to pick up things they really start to be confident in themselves and honestly, you see them making a push and making the uh, MLS playoffs. That's what, that's what we've been saying this whole time, yeah, is that exactly. it's a tale of two teams this year, essentially. You have the one Toronto FC that goes out and looks like they can beat any single team yep. on the pitch in MLS. And then you have another Toronto FC that comes out and looks like they wouldn't be able to beat anyone in the MLS. It's two different teams, and we're really hoping that the first team comes out and plays the rest of the season. And it looks like you're right. Yep. It looks like they've turned that corner in the last few yep. games. They've looked a lot better. So, so it, looks, it looks good for us. But you know what, Ryan? Back to you. We want to know what in your head would be the best case scenario for you at the end of this season. When the loan runs out at York 9, you get put back to Toronto FC. 
do you want to stay in Toronto and kind of make make a run at making the team? Would you like another year at York, or is there something else on your mind completely? Uh, honestly, it hasn't been on my mind uh, recent, recently or lately. Um, right now, the main focus is about is all about York 9 FC, um, trying to make the best out of it, trying to make that uh, championship match uh, at coming to the end of uh, October. Um, but I haven't really put much thought when it comes to season end. Uh, you know, TFC uh, holds my faith in their hands uh, when they make a decision come the end. And whether that is to pick up the option or not, that's totally up to them. But the only part that I could do is help, is um, improve myself as a soccer player. And uh, I know no matter where I'm going to be uh, for next year, is that I'm trying to go and make that next push to further improve myself and try to make a mark for whatever team I play for. It's the right attitude to yeah, have, really. Absolutely. I mean, you're right. You can't really look too far. You still got to have the fall season going yep. right now. York Nine's making a push, right? Like, yep. they're looking yep. good. You guys have a chance. You got to keep going. Cavalry slipped a little bit lately, so yep. there's opening at the top. And with Forge playing all these games in the Concacaf League, they're going to be short yep. team too for the yep. playing in the fall season. There's a good shot for you guys. So yep. all the best in that. And then I know we want to talk about the fans too in the CPL, right? Yes, absolutely. So I wanted to talk about. Basically, I was at that Forge game yeah. against uh, CD Olympia, and uh, it was last week, and I, I couldn't believe the, the turnout. Mm. They had a great turnout, and I, I constantly want to encourage people to keep showing up to the CPL. I want this league to do extremely well, and you know what, to build a brand in Canada. And, you know, it's so important for players like Ryan as well to get that environment that, that they need to play. And, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, too. Like when I was at the York Nine Montreal mm -hmm. game, they had that section of the fans too that were going wild the yep. whole yeah. game. Yep. That's all you could hear. Like you had the Mon I was sitting closer to the Montreal fans, but all I could hear was York Nines in the corner <laughs> going insane. <laughs> What's it like playing in front of these crowds in Canada? Because soccer has never been the biggest sport in Canada, but it's True. getting it's getting it there. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. are getting on the soccer train. The so, start. what's it like playing in front of these Canadian fans as opposed to last year when you played in front of MLS crowds? Uh, the, the the whole fact is that. You know, you're playing in front of soccer enthusiasts. Uh, almost every single person there, uh, majority, well, majority uh, soccer opinionated fans. And you know, just just being able to be on the field and being able to express yourself and make them happy that you know they are in this environment, being able to entertain them as fans because that is what that's what they came out to see. Uh, you know, um, moving across the MLS, they have everything is much bigger. Obviously, the MLS they have bigger crowds, bigger stadiums, and whatnot. But so far, the majority of games have been, especially in uh, Calvary and Halifax, the crowds they draw are almost back uh, to capacity. You know, it's almost the stadium could hold a maximum of 5,000, close to 8,000, and these stadiums are absolutely ramp. So imagine what it could become in the following years when uh, these stadiums are to expand. Uh, what's what's the threshold for them on the amount of fans? So that's that. So so far, it's been absolutely brilliant. You know the fans who come out I know we have we have a tougher end on our side because I know majority of our games sometimes play on a yeah, Toronto FC night, night yeah, yeah when we have a home game but still the York 9 fans still manage to come out and they have an absolute blast and I'm, I'm just happy to entertain them almost every single night I'm on that field that's good that's good well Ryan we'd like to thank you for your time oh we got more man let's keep that more oh you know yeah what? let's keep you know, it you know what for all our cpl fans out there let's get some quick cpl stuff going in what's the best stadium to play in in the cpl you've played so far not including york because i know yeah. you, you, got, you, got, you got a soft spot in your heart for york what kind of what stadium so far i mean my favorite from a looks perspective has been cavalry's that cottage look, look. like it, it, it looks very nice it's on tv like fulham it's yes so which never place, been never been a fulham <laughs> which, which place, which place um, have you played in the cpl is the nicest stadium do you think nicest stadium in terms of feel or like the whole atmosphere the whole atmosphere uh i really like halifax yeah I really like halifax wow. uh, they have a, a super supportive section uh, when we were playing there, it sucks because everybody knows my name. And, <laughs> and they, they see that show for me the whole game. Yeah, you were getting but, it the whole game for sure uh, then. That's but, awesome. But, being, but if you are a Halifax player, um, it must be so lovely to play there. And you know, the whole stadium, I love the grass, the feel. The feel is, is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I, love, I, I like Halifax. Yeah. That's good. And you know, you too, with York 9, York 9's got a lot of good players right now, you know. Ingham, yeah. Ingham and Nett's a great a great keeper. You know, Gatas, I went out, because the game of York 9 in Montreal, yeah. too, Gatas came on right there, then he made a huge difference in the game. Um, what's it like playing with this group of guys? Like, what is this team, kind of the culture of the team behind closed doors that people don't see from just watching the game? You know what? Uh, put it in simple words, 
um, all of us are like almost brothers, you know. That's you know, cool. always, always pulling some prank on one another. In the <laughs> you know, it's pretty. Just to be in the environment um, behind closed doors, it's it's almost funny. It's almost like a, a comedic act, to be honest. It's like watching one of those shows where they just pull pranks on one another. That, that's basically what it's like majority of the time. But we honestly love each other to death, try to support one another all the time. Uh, you know, just, just being just being together, we do a whole lot of stuff together. We, when we go out, we go out together. If we want to eat, we go and eat together, you know. So it's a, it's a pretty like a close knitted family. In that's there. good. That's how you build a culture yep. of winning, right? You get the chemistry up, and then the results follow. Yep. Um, what what about like the two seasons? Because MLS is just one season. Here yep. you got the spring season and the fall season. Yep. How do you prepare yourself mentally for that? Because you know, because you have the big cup game at the end where the two champions of each season uh-huh. play each other. But it's got to be hard going through a spring season stopping. Even though traveling the, as well, I was gonna add yeah. back and forth. Especially in Canada, it's huge. yeah, it's huge. There's a lot of travel <laughs> going on. So what's that like? How do you prepare for that mentally? Uh, at the end of the day, how I really how I uh, really look at things, it's. Uh, you know, you go a game at a time. No matter whether it be spring, no matter whether it be fall. You know, the next game you have to get a result. You go to that game, you start looking forward to the next game, and that's that's honestly how it should be. Uh, just like how I guess you know, referring to Zlatan back in MLS, he, talk, he talks about how the uh, the mentality is there, and it's all about just making it's just making playoffs. Everything is about making playoffs. Uh, what what the mentality should be is just you know every single game. Whether it's home or away, you have to get a result. That's how it's viewed anywhere else in the world. You know, La Liga, one, game, one game at a time. One game at a time. And exactly. that's that's how I like to look at things. Um, no matter if a game is two weeks, we have a long break. You know, from day one after that after that last game is to prepare yourself and be fully prepared for that next game. Okay. Well, you know, I think we got time for one more question. Yep. Now, Ryan, this is going to be a tricky one. <laughs> Feel free not to answer. And I'm going to make it sound as best as I can. There's been a lot of people, a lot of people interacting with us, and a lot of them are saying, Vanny out. I'm not going to ask you your opinion on it. What I want to know is what are your opinions on Vanny as a coach? What is his coaching style like in practice? How does he treat each game? Because you know what? He went from being one of the best coaches in Toronto history. Everyone turned on him quick once he had one bad season. And this year with a few subs that have kind of been looking a bit shaky when he brings them on. So people have been saying it. It's a whole argument. Vanny in, Vanny out. I I know you can't put a stance on that. But maybe you can just tell us how he is behind the scenes, what his coaching style is like. Uh, First off, uh... That's how fans are gonna be at the end of the day. Uh, you're having a good day, they're gonna be happy. You're having a bad day, they're gonna be upset about it. Uh, being in this business, that's that's what you have to deal with at the end of the day. Uh, in terms of Greg, he's a great person, uh, absolute tactician to be honest. Uh, I feel sometimes he he stay, he doesn't sleep at night trying to think about oh, wow. the next game <laughs> and his whole tactical awareness of how he wants to approach every single game is something every different than. You know, when you have all those moving parts, some, sometimes things don't go together well. But in terms of how he prepares himself and how he carries himself leading into the next games, honestly, I, I've never seen another coach see him take it that far on how he prepares himself and how he carries himself in front of the team. And he, he absolutely, him and his coaching staff does absolute best job to prepare us for whatever game I had. And I, I think, you know, Fans, fans could be a little bit too harsh because at the end of the day, you know, in, in, in what I view, uh, a manager can only tell his moving pieces what to do and what you would like him to do on a whole masterful plan. But at the end of the day, you know, it's the people who are out there on the field who have to take responsible. You know, sometimes things might be going bad on the field and, you know, you never know what might happen. But, you know, as uh, professional players, this, this is what you were meant to do. This is what you're here for. You have to think for yourself as well and be able to adapt to whatever situation there is on the field. And that's that's my whole take on it, to be honest. Well, you know, you made a great point calling him a tactician because the one thing I will give him is he seems to know where his players play best. Yep. What yep. a lot of people don't know is Richie Lorea isn't a fullback. 
No, he's not. He never no, played not. fullback. No. Greg Vanny brought him in, yeah. saw saw a need at fullback, thought, Richie, let's put you there, yeah. put him there, and now look at him. He's getting called up to there Canada. He's been a revelation for Toronto. Yeah. So you know what? He does know what he's doing. So people do, I agree with you, do need to be a little bit easier on him. Yeah. I mean, if, if Toronto can't make the playoffs this year, even Bill Manning, who was on before, he said there's going to be some conversations happening. But that's if and when. I yeah. do believe Toronto make the playoffs. Dante? I totally agree with that. And I'm pretty sure, Ryan, you, you think they're going to be oh, making the playoffs? Sure. Right? <laughs> okay. They're making a deep run this <laughs> yeah, year again they have to. but yeah so that's the thing guys you got to look at it from every perspective one result doesn't make a bad coach one year you got it like you said yeah he can only do so much so let's give him a little bit of a break on twitter there all right football <laughs> twitter all right? i don't like what i've been seeing uh, fans will be fans fans yeah. will be fans, fans, will be exactly, fans. that's right exactly. well ryan we'd like to thank you for your time uh we wish you all the best in the future awesome. and as well we'd like to thank our sponsors Nine Rounds Boxing, Popeyes Woodbridge, and of course TFC on the road. Uh, for any for any trips for TFC when they're on the road, please go see TFC on the road. It's a tremendous experience. You'll we're have gonna, a blast. We're gonna have to talk to Santiago and get some York Nine on the road oh, trips yeah. going. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Santiago, you better be watching this. You heard it here, York 9 on the road, let's make it happen. All right, and, <laughs> and of course, guys, I know we're missing Toe. He knows everything. The one thing he does know is it's summertime and he's with his kids in this great time. He's going to be back coming the next episode, which should be dropping either next week or the week after, and we'll get back to all the great pods that we've been doing the past few months. So, Ryan, again, thank you very much. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Ryan, tell for everybody. Have a good night.